Howdy ho there, Fred's Bobby here today. Hey folks, today I'm going to make a quick little video to show you how to figure um, the correct angle when you are putting up crown molding or baseboard when you have a wall such as we have here that has uh, anything other than a 90 degree angle, okay? We have like a 45 here, so stay tuned. We're going to show you how to figure some of these angles and cut some baseboard and cut some crown molding. So stay tuned. Okay friends, hey, a few years ago, I actually installed this wall right here with the archway at the top and built this little bar top here and closed this wall in. But, I never did finish doing the trim up here until today, okay? So, I installed this piece of crown up here and as you can see, I mean, we still need to caulk and fill the nail heads and you'll see that we will need to caulk up at the ceiling although we have the uh, lines on the um, crown actually matching perfectly uh, the uh, existing pieces that were on here had been caulked at the top so we'll have to fill that crack to make that uh, match up with the existing crown but let me show you um, one tool that you will definitely need if you're ever dealing with a uh, wall that's anything other than a 90 degree but I actually recommend it checking all your walls is a angle gauge okay I'm going to show you how to use this to where you can get your correct angle and show you a little mathematical equation that you can use to, to where you'll cut this right the first time. Okay, folks, I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Let's take our angle gauge up here on the wall. Let's push it down until it meets the contour here and see what degree this wall is at. Okay, it looks like it's at about uh, 100 and... 45 degrees okay so here's your little mathematical equation take 180 180 degrees and subtract 144 okay all right we'll do that on the calculator right quick we'll take 180 and subtract 144 and we end up with 36 okay now 36, we want to divide that by 2, okay? So we'll divide that by 2, and that will be 18, okay? So 18 degrees is what you want to cut. If you're 45 in it, um, the two pieces, uh, you would cut them at 18 degrees, okay, on your miter saw. But we actually had to... Um, the old molding, I actually left it long to where it met the wall. And uh, so we had to cope this piece on both ends. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And when you cope an angle like this, you really have to grind back a good bit on the uh, on some of the angles. More so if you were coping a straight 90 degree angle. And we'll show you a little bit of that when we get out to the garage. But mainly what I'm trying to show you is the formula. Okay, It's always 180 minus whatever your degree reading is and get that number, divide it by two, and that gives you your angle that you will use to cut either your crown or your baseboard. See down here at the bottom, I've got a piece of baseboard here that I've already cut, and I haven't nailed this one in place yet, okay? So down here, I cut this one, I actually had to cope it, so I actually cut the saw. When I, when I cut, I cut 18 degrees this way, and see how this piece had already ran past so I had to back cope the end of the piece and then get it up here to where it fits and then on the other end I decided just to 45 it now this angle here was different okay I checked this angle with the angle gauge and from the reading that we got we ended up cutting these two pieces at about 23 degrees okay and you can see once I get them up there, that's going to be a that's going to be a nice fit. Okay, so we will. Uh, there's our formula that uh, that if you use that, you should be able to cut the correct angle every time. And as we continue on with this project, I'll show you how to do an outside corner as well. Okay, folks. Hey, we got our baseboard down here in place, and we're getting ready to go out and cut some shoe mold. But I just want to show you one more time about these angles. Okay, so I took the angle gauge, I stuck it down here on the wall or actually on the baseboard itself and my angle is 145 okay and over here my angle is 130 okay 
Now I took a measurement for length from, because for, for, I'm gonna cut this piece of shoe mold first. And so right here, where, where the edge of the, right here at the end of the um, uh, baseboard, where it meets the other baseboard, took a measurement from there all the way to the uh, other spot at the same point right here. And then that measurement was 56 and 7 eighths, okay? Now, real quickly, we'll go through our little mathematical formula one more time to figure these angles. Okay, so we'll take 180. Let's figure the angle down here on this side first, okay? Remember our angle is 145, so we will take 180 minus 145 equals 35 divided by 2 equals 17.5. So I've already wrote here on the, my little board here, I'm going to cut that angle at 17.5. Now I'm also going to go ahead and cut the other end that goes right here and I'll just let it run wild. But I'm going to go ahead and get my angle cut and then I'll just come in here and simply mark the end of it. Same thing on the other side. Now our other angle, let's go and zero out the calculator, it was 130. So we take 180 minus, this is real simple, but we'll go through the calculator anyway, minus 130 equals 50. 50 divided by 2 equals 25. So the angle that we'll cut on this piece is 25 degrees. And of course on the other piece that we're going to let run wild, we'll go, go ahead and cut a 25 degree angle on it too. We'll come in here and just mark the end of it and then cut it off and we'll put a little, slight little bevel back this way. And down here, same thing. We'll cut it off, we'll mark it, we'll go back and we will um, put a slight bevel back this way. So friends, that's uh, one more little uh, example of using the angle gauge and getting your angles right. We'll go out here and cut all three of these pieces, come in here, and they should fit perfectly. Okay, all the, all the baseboard, all the shoe mold is down now. As you can see, we have actually completed the job in here. And we had this uh, one little corner over here that we had to put a piece of baseboard and shoe mold down. Friends, uh, real quickly, I want to show you when you're doing this, uh, it's better to use some pneumatic tools. This is a little uh, uh, brad gun that shoots a nail about an inch and a half long. And we also have our finishing gun here that shoots a two inch nail. Uh, these are handy to have. You can do a lot better work than trying to uh, drive them in by hand with conventional nails. Your work will look a lot more quality because you won't leave no hammer marks or anything on anything. Let me take you around here. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next, okay? Up here at the top, as you can see, I have no crown molding. I've got to come over to that piece of uh, entertainment center. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in those pieces and come out here. And this corner piece here, I will show you how we find the angle on that and show you how to do an outside corner. As you can see, I have an existing piece of crown here that I probably cut off with just like a... Um, a handsaw or something. It looks relatively straight. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. As you can see, I can pull it back and I can work on it just a little bit. And I'm going to try to match that angle uh, with my piece that I bring over to the corner. And of course, down here on the bottom, we have to uh, install some baseboard as well. Probably won't really go into showing you that, but I do want to show you the outside corner, uh, how we do that. And I will take you out to the shop and I'll show you a few tips on cutting uh, crown, cutting baseboard, and cutting shoe mold. Uh, I'm not really the greatest expert on it, but hopefully what I can uh, show you will help you along the way. So stay tuned, friends. Okay. Hey, we've already got our baseboard installed uh, on the outside of this wall here. And as I promised you, I'll show you how to do one outside uh, angle measurement. So we've already taken our little gauge here, okay? And I put it up here about where the bottom of the uh, um, crown molding will be. And I took a reading. I got, I got it fitted to the wall. And our angle was of 123 degrees. Okay, so let's go right over here. We'll do our little figure one more time. And we'll uh, 180 minus 123 equals 57 
divided by 2 equals 28 and a half degrees is the angle <clears throat> that we want to cut our crown molding to go up here. Now remember this time we're not going to cut it to where it angles back like an inside cut. We're actually going to make sure we cut it and it's going to actually angle, angle out this way to meet the other piece. And uh, when we get out to the shop and I show you how to cut um, some different angles and stuff and show you how to cut crown, that'll make a little bit more sense. But we're taking our measurement. We, we went ahead, like I said, we put the piece up there in the corner. We've got the angle cut on it. We put our piece up here. It's too big for me to hold and um, hold the camera as well. We held it up there and we made a mark at the bottom side of the crown. And now we'll go out and we'll cut that angle that we just figured out was 28 and a half. We'll cut that angle and we'll make sure it comes out this way. And then we still have to work on this little piece here. We're gonna sand it and get it nice and flat and we'll match that, that angle there. Uh, just butt another piece into it. And then we'll uh, actually get our piece uh, cut to limp too. And uh, I will show you after we get them tacked in place, here at the end where they come together, you want to leave them floating until you get ready to nail them at the end. And we'll put some caulk or some glue uh, right on the joint and we'll hold them together and we'll nail it. So I'll show you that part uh, before we get it done. Okay, folks, hey, we got uh, our two pieces of um, crown installed. We got them uh, tacked on either end and we're letting them float right there on that corner. So I'm going to get up here and hopefully show you. I've already kind of checked the fit and the fit is looking pretty good. Uh, but we actually have to do a little bit of, let's see here. I've got some glue. I stopped by the home improvement store and I got a little bit of glue. So what I'm going to try to do is actually I'm going to put some, I'm just going to rub, take, put some on my finger here. I think it'll be the easiest thing to do. And I'm going to put it right here on the edge of this uh, piece of crown and just kind of lather it up good maybe let, put a little thin coat on the other side too that ought to be good and I'm going to wipe it off on my shirt my old dirty shirt here it needs to go in the trash can anyway okay so we we'll grab these two pieces because this one's kind of got to pry it back a little bit I'm going to jam them up here together at the same time Gotta hold them lined up. Okay, so I got it fitting pretty good. Oh yeah, it looks nice. Okay, so now I've got it up here. The fit is excellent. So I'm gonna take my brad gun. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a couple, a couple of brads in here just to kind of hold it, and then I'll finish nailing it. Okay, friends, that's how you do an outside uh, joint. And that's looking pretty good. And like I say, we're gonna we'll get the uh, two-inch um, gun here in a minute. Yeah, that nurse pulled it loose. Let's just put one more in here if we can. Okay. Now we'll go back with our uh, <clears throat> finishing gun with the two-inch nails, and we'll finish nailing these two pieces off, and we'll be ready to uh, use some painter's putty over all the nail heads. And then we'll use uh, some latex caulk to uh, go and caulk, you know, at the bottom around all our baseboard, shoe mold. Okay, friends, we're out here in the shop, and I promised you that I would show you how to cut a few pieces of this trim. Let's start off with the simplest thing to cut is um, crown molding. Uh, no, sorry. I meant to say uh, shoe mold, okay? Easiest thing to cut shoe mold. Now, if you look at this piece of shoe mold, let's see if I can hold it here. You can see that the distance between here and here is actually longer than it is this way, okay? If you've got a piece of um, molding that looks equal on both sides, well, you don't have a piece of shoe mold, you got a piece of cord around, okay? But this is shoe mold, and it's meant to be installed just like that, with the tallest side going vertical, just like that right there, okay? So most of your cuts, you will hold it in that position. So let's say we are, um, you know, running shoe mold and we run out, so we're gonna cut a 45. Typically, you're gonna always be cutting 45s 
when you do shoe mold. Unless, of course, you have some of them crazy angles like we had today, you know, where you got to figure with the angle gauge. But you would just hold it upright and you go ahead and cut your, cut your angle on there. And also, that same angle, like if you're finishing up shoe mold, like um, right, right when it gets to a door jam, typically I just put a little 45 on it, you know, and finish it off. Let it, instead of it being just a um, ended um, square cut, I put like a 45 on it and let it, like if it's going up against a door jam, like so, I guess, something like that right there, you know, I would just have it have it up against there if that was a piece of uh, door molding, okay? So anyway, that's about all there is to know about shoe mold. It's pretty easy. Just make sure you look and make sure you're cutting it, holding it in an upright position like it goes. And that's about it. Um, baseboard, okay, here's a piece of baseboard. Um, typically, you can do one of two things. Um, if you are going into a 90 degree corner you can just 45 each one of these okay and and by doing that i'll just go ahead and demonstrate it right quick we'll just uh go ahead and 45 this and then we'll turn our saw and we'll 45 this piece of other piece of scrap here Now those two pieces right there going into a corner, actually I didn't cut quite enough off, but you kind of understand what I'm talking about here. They would go <clears throat> right into a 90 degree corner just like that, okay? Now, but you could also do it another way, and this is actually a better way to do it, is actually if you cope one, one piece of the uh, um, baseboard. So in the 90 degree wall you would actually run this one just butt it straight in with a square cut and then I'll show you actually we've already got the proper cut here you would back cut like this right here and um, let me find my coping saw uh, here we go now here's the coping saw and what, we're, what, what you would actually do is uh, go ahead and you want to cut right along this line right all the way down and kind of back cut it just a little bit now I'm going to cut the camera off. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and make this cut and then I'll show you how it fits up against this piece. Okay, just got through coping this piece of uh, molding here. I cut cut back on you can kind of see how I made sure I cut at least back against the angle. And now you can see that these actually go right up together like so. Now you can do all your molding that way. You either 45 it or you can uh, butt one in 45 the other one and then cope it okay uh, coping is actually better uh, for the fact that under expansion and contraction typically this joint here will not uh, expand and show anything uh, as quickly as a uh, joint that is 45 okay so now now let's get to what I feel like is the most difficult and the trickiest for people to try to cut, and it's even that way for me sometimes, I have to think about it, is cutting crown molding, okay? So let's start with, let's just say we're going to do a inside 90 degree, um, like like a wall coming together, we're gonna, we're gonna put a put two pieces of crown, we're gonna go into 90 degrees, okay? So let's go ahead and we're gonna cut one piece. Let's just go ahead and cut this side since we're here. Now crown molding, you wanna flip it upside down, okay? Because this is the traditionally the way that it should go up in a house, although I have some, some people, they'll, they'll put it up there that way. But uh, majority, the, the thicker little end here goes up toward the top. So I'm going to call this here the bottom side. So we're going to flip it upside down, put it in our uh, up against our fence here. And what's, what's tricky about it is trying to hold it, hold it up here square like it's going to be on the wall. And uh, this is kind of a small saw. Um, if I was doing this more for a living, I would buy a saw like my father has. He has a really nice uh, Hitachi with a 14-inch blade on it, and it has a big 
table here and everything. It makes things a lot easier. They also make a jig that you can hold your crown molding into. Uh, I've seen those before. It holds it nice and square. So anyway, we're going to go and make a cut. And, um, and then, uh, let's see, we're just going to square cut this right quick. Two pieces. So when it goes up in, up against the wall there, that's how, that's how, oh, wait a minute, hold on, sorry. This is one wall, so now we got to make a piece that goes this way, okay? Now here's where I'm probably going to get confused. But anyway, so if that's going to be that piece there, we're going to have to flip it in the fence here and cut it back this way. I believe this is right. Like I say, it can get kind of confusing with this uh, crown molding. We're going to make sure we're squared up there. And we're going to make a cut. We should be able to put these two pieces of molding together and if it was a 90 degree corner this should fit perfectly okay I don't know if you can tell but that's uh, that's how it would go together now let's say it was um, like one of those complicated angles like we that we just showed you that we were doing in our house I remember that uh, let's see what was one of the figures I think 20 four degrees was one of them. So basically you would do the same thing, just whatever, after you use that mathematical equation, and we're just gonna use 22.5, okay? That would be a dead on 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle, half of that's 22.5. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see which piece here we're gonna, gonna cut this way, it would be this piece, okay? So we're gonna shove it up in here. And after you know that angle, Definitely get you one of those angle gauges if you're not sure. Even if you're doing just a 90 degree wall, because sometimes uh, they build out a little bit too much sheetrock putty on there, and you might not actually have a, quite a 90 degree, and you might have, and you can use that formula to make little slight adjustments. So here we go. That's at the uh, 22 and a half degree. We'll go back on this side, 22 and a half degree. We'll cut the other piece, flipping it upside down. And we'll hold it up here in the fence as good as we can. And we'll go ahead and... Now, when these two pieces meet here, like they're up on the wall, as you can see, that, that's about a 45 degree angle there, okay? And then they, they meet nice and uh, even. And so, friends, that's about all I know to tell you about cutting molding. Um, this is a pretty inexpensive saw. Um, it's great for this, uh, you know, this crown molding that's not too wide and, and the uh, three and a half inch baseboard. But if you're going to, if you have a home or something where you're going to, let me put the camera up here on myself so you can see me when I'm talking. And uh, if you're going to, do a home with like some six inch baseboard or like some real wide crown, uh, crown you know, that has like three or four pieces of, of uh, crown that you cut to actually put it all together. You would definitely want to invest into a better saw than what I have here. But this one here um, does pretty good for what I need it for. I don't do this for a living uh, every day. So friends, I hope you found the video helpful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you can find us uh, on Facebook and on Twitter at Mint Hillbilly. And uh, I thank you for watching the video today. Uh, tell a friend about us, and we'll see you next time. Take care.